Introducing the mantis. Is it true that these insects are able to kill birds? With those large compound eyes, it is definitely possible. While on the topic of eyes, mantids are the only insect able to see in stereoscopic vision. What this means is they can see just like a human. They use this incredible sight to be able to track every slight movement within their environment. Along with the eyes, the praying mantis has a very flexible neck and is able to turn its head nearly 180 degrees with ease. This makes it seem like it's not even an insect at all. Even though these bugs can look pretty menacing, overall they're pretty harmless to humans. Unless you stick your finger in between those barbs. But as long as you don't purposely stab yourself with those barbs, I think you'll be okay. I mean seriously, how evil can a bug be if it's going to sit down and watch a movie with you? Well, I suppose that could be pretty evil. And this poor mealworm would probably agree that that would also be pretty evil. If you're a bug, these jaws are where the real danger lies. The forearms of the mantis are mainly used to just capture the prey. Even though they have all the spikes on them, that's not where the damage really comes from. These jaws can cut through prey items instantaneously, leaving the, fa leaving the wounds extremely fatal, and as you can see here, this mealworm is in half. However, these arms often do come in handy while feeding. These arms are used to hold the prey down while the mantis devours it alive. As harsh as that may seem, the mantis usually is kind enough to go for the head so that the prey is instantly killed and it can just eat in peace. And then this happens. Mantids are indeed cannibalistic, but why? The main motivation for this behavior is food. The male praying mantis is significantly smaller than the female mantis making him especially vulnerable. A female praying mantis can kill prey up to twice its size, so another praying mantis is no problem. However, a lot of males do make it out alive and even push their luck with the females. The males get especially lucky when the female is not in feeding mode. However, when the females are in feeding mode, other things are on the menu. The size of the prey depends highly on the size of the mantis. Some species of mantises are extremely large, so they are able to take out extremely large prey, like for example, a small lizard. Some mantises only range at a length, at a length of like an inch long, therefore they cannot take out a lizard. But some mantises can get up to six inches and incredibly strong for their size, so they can, they can even take out small snakes. The mantis is responsible for the death of the vertebrates are always on 100% the females. The males are not physically built to handle giant prey, but the female's strength and sheer muscle can handle even a small mammal, like a mouse. The females use these extra nutrients to build up their eggs, so their eggs are healthy and there's more produces more eggs with the more protein they produce. Mantises are not fussy on how they obtain this protein. They will kill just about anything that moves in front of them that they were able to kill. With that being said, man mantises are not invasive species. Matter of fact, they actually control their own populations by eating themselves. Prey items emit a vibration when they're moving, and this attracts the mantis's vision. Once locked on the prey, the mantis attacks with sheer aggression. Depending on how quickly the prey moves depends on how quickly the mantis will strike. This particular behavior explains why the females will attack the males during, before, or, or after mating. The only reason it stands out is because the males are capable of living after death. The zombified males are actually capable of mating with the females after the male is already dead. This happens because organs in the male's abdomen turn on after it's dead to temporarily keep its body alive to be able to mate. This is an evolu evolutionary ad adaptation by the male so that he can reproduce and the mantis population will continue to thrive. This makes sense because if the females ate all the males, the mantises would virtually go extinct. But since males are able to do this, the population stay alive and no harm is done. No harm is done in the population at least. The males losing their life is kind of harmful in a way, but the males kind of sacrifice themselves to the females. This sacrifice might seem harsh, 
but actually it benefits the male. A sacrificed male has more genetic material in the female, which in the end leads to more of the male's offspring being his. As complicated as this all may seem, it all comes so very quickly. These insects only live from around six months to a year, depending on the species. Most mantises hatch out in the spring, breed, and then die off in the fall. However, the dead leaf mantis from Malaysia can live up to two years in the conditions in the rainforest. A unique behavior in this species of mantis is playing dead. The mantis will press its legs together and lie as close as possible to the leaves, making its body as leaf-like as possible. Nearby predators are focused on other things rather than this dead leaf. Blending in helps these insects stay hidden from predators, and it proves to be very, very effective. Back to the lifespan of the mantis. Mantises lay their eggs in what's called an oothica. This foamy pouch protects the eggs inside and then hardens to form a nearly impenetrable case. The slits on top of this egg, right down the middle here, is where the, 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 where the babies come out of. A couple hundred mantises could be in each egg case and the females could lay up to four or more eggs in a life cycle. The mantis cannot lay those egg cases if it is spotted by a predator. The predator has returned and has the mantis in its sights. The mantis is in trouble. If it doesn't get out of there fast, the predator will devour it alive. is doomed. In nature, it doesn't matter how good of a predator you are, because sometimes you just become the prey. Now dogs are obvious predators for these insects, but will a praying mantis attack a lizard? Well, of course it will. It's twice the size and an easy snack. Okay guys, we're gonna see if this praying mantis We'll go for a dead fish. Oh my god. He didn't even hesitate. The fish is already busted open. He already cut it open. Look at that. As you guys can see, these mantises are capable of slicing through actual flesh and not just other insects. Now, if I would not have taken this fish away from the praying mantis, it would have stripped it completely down to the, to the bones and maybe even more. Like, this is all that was left of the fish. Basically nothing. So we know the mantis will go for prey that is twice its size, but will it go for prey that is more than twice its size? This is a Russian tortoise. A Russian tortoise is not a predator of the praying mantis at all, but what it does eat is dead leaves. So we're gonna see if this tortoise will try to eat this praying mantis, and we'll see what the praying mantis tries to do to the tortoise. So far, absolutely, oop. Mantis is backing off. Look at that, guys. Look at that. That's a defense pose. This bug is not going to try to attack this tortoise. Look at that, guys. What are you doing right now? He's opening up his, his wings. It's got this cool color pattern. He's trying to spook the tortoise. He doesn't, he doesn't even care. But yeah, they have their limits. You saw this praying mantis attack a lizard and even a fish twice its size. But this tortoise weighs probably at least 10 times this thing's size, maybe maybe even more. 
This is how a mantis would react to a predator. This is this tortoise is kind of just simulating the role of a predatory animal here. He's not really. I don't think he's going to target the mantis. It kind of makes sense that he would, since it mimics a leaf. But if I'm sure you can see it now, and he can clearly see that's not it's not a leaf, so he's not going to attack it. Look at this. This is another really cool thing that these guys do. You can see how he has his arms behind his head, make himself look bigger. He's got his wings unfolded, making himself look bigger. That's the overall stance. Look at that. Even showing his mandibles a little bit, guys. Look at that. You kind of have to have some respect for these bugs. Like, this bug's willing to defend himself against something ten times his size. Look at this. If you guys were faced up against a hippopotamus, would you try to run away or would you try to square up with the thing? Oh man, that is beautiful though.